On Tuesday, President Barack Obama joined comedian Zach Galifianakis on his Funny or Die web-based interview program, Between Two Ferns. The sketch immediately became contentious when Galifianakis launched into a series of critiques of Obama's presidency to which the president was unable to respond. The sketch cracked wise about Galifianakis' await, the presidential turkey pardons, gay marriage, drone strikes, and, ultimately, a few words from the president selling Obamacare. Welcome to another edition of Between Two Ferns. I'm your host, Zach Galifianakis, and uh, my guest today is uh, Barack Obama, President Barack Obama. Good to be with you, Zach. First question. In 2013, you pardoned the turkey. What do you have planned for 2014? We'll probably pardon another turkey. We, we do that at every Thanksgiving. Was that depressing to you, seeing a, a, a one turkey kind of taken out of circulation? Uh, turkey you couldn't eat. So how does this work? Do you send uh, Ambassador Rodman to North Korea on your behalf? I read somewhere that you'd be sending Hulk Hogan to Syria, or is that more of a, a job for Tanya Hardy? Zach, he's, he's not our ambassador. What should we do about North Ikea? While we move on. I have to know, what is it like to be the last black president? Seriously? What's it like for this to be the last time you ever talk to a president. It must kind of stink, though, that you can't run, you know, three times. You no, know. actually, I think it's a good idea. Uh, you know, if I ran a third time, it'd be sort of like doing a third hangover movie. It didn't really work out very well, did it? Now, I have to say that I've seen this show before, and uh, some of the episodes have probably been a little bit better than this. You know, for example, the one with Bradley Cooper, that was a great show. Bradley Cooper, kind of carried that movie, didn't he? Which, which film are you seeing now? Uh, the, the, those uh, hangover movies. Uh, he, he, basically, he carried them. Yeah, everybody loves Bradley. Good for him. Good looking guy. Being like that in Hollywood, that's easy. Tall, handsome, that's easy. Be short, fat, and smell like Doritos and try to make it Hollywood. Is it going to be hard in two years when uh, you're no longer president and people will stop letting you win at basketball? How, how does it feel having a three-inch vertical? It's a three-inch horizontal. I want to thank um, President Obama for uh, being on the show. I'm going to press this. Uh, don't touch that, please. If you are a family making less than $250,000 a year, you will not see your taxes go up. You will not see one dime's worth of tax increase. Any form of tax increase. Question, didn't the president break that promise? Well, Chris, I, you know, if you go back and you look at the laws that have been enacted since the president's taken off in we, office, we have cut taxes for those families. We have reduced their taxes. But, but according to the, the Supreme Court, the only this is going to raise taxes the, for those no, families. No, that, that's not what the Supreme Court said. What the Supreme Court said was this was constitutional. They said it didn't matter what Congress called it. It is a penalty no, no, for no, the 1%. No, wait, a, wait a minute, sir. It is a penalty for the 1% who choose they, not to buy insurance. Mr. Liu, they call it a tax. No, actually, technically what they said is the Congress has many powers. There's a Commerce Clause, there's taxing powers, and it was constitutional. No, That's no, what they said. No, well, they wait, said it doesn't matter wait, wait, what you call I can't it. Wait, I can't let you go there. It specifically said that it is not constitutional under the Commerce Clause. They said no. it is constitutional under the tax. And as to the question about raising taxes for the middle class, if I may, sir, let's just look at the record. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office estimates that in 2016, four million Americans will pay the mandate penalty or tax. Seventy-five percent of those people will make less than $120,000 a year. And the CBO says between 2012 and 2021, those folks will pay $27 billion in additional taxes. So, Chris, the the, same if, if, if I may just finish my question, and then I'll, I, I promise I'll let you talk. The middle class is taking quite a hit 
by what yeah. the Supreme Court said is a tax. Now, th I, I think if you look at all of the laws enacted in the last three and a half years, you would see that those families have a tax cut. That, say, that all the independent analysts, whether it's the Congressional Budget Office or others, would validate that there has been a tax cut I, for I'm middle class families. I'm not arguing that. All I'm saying is that this is a tax increase on the middle class of $27 billion over the next 10 years. N no, what this is, this, this is a law that says if you can afford insurance and you choose not to buy it, and you choose to have your health costs be a burden to others, you'll pay a penalty so that you'll pay your fair share. That's what this law says. For the 99% of the people who buy insurance or who get it through you know, the, the, the tax cuts that are in this act, th they're not going to be affected. You keep your insurance, you don't pay any kind of penalty. For the very few people who decide to be free riders and not have insurance but still have their costs go into the system so the rest of us pay it, there's a penalty. It is, it is not a burden on the middle class. Well, uh, again, the, the nonpartisan CBO says four million Americans will be paying that tax uh, by 2016. And let's look at why Chief Justice Roberts called it a tax. Uh, it will be collected and enforced by the Internal Revenue Service. What you pay is calculated as a percentage of your income. And, and here's what the uh, president's lawyer, the Solicitor General Donald Verrilli, told the court in defending the mandate. Not only is it fair to read this as an exercise of the tax power, but th this court has got an obligation to construe it as an exercise of the tax power if it can be upheld on that basis. Why? Mr. Liu, if it walks, looks, and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Well, you know, uh, Chris, uh, it's been a long time since I've practiced law, but I know one of the things about our judicial system is that you can make arguments to the court on multiple grounds. That's what Don was doing. He was saying there are a lot of ways to look at this. It was set up and it was not called a tax. Inspectors will have 24-7 access to Iran's key nuclear facilities. Iran will have access to Iran's entire nuclear supply chain, its uranium mines and mills, its conversion facility, and its centrifuge manufacturing and storage facilities.